Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm doing a first impression of the new Rose Ink Soft Light Skin Smoothing Liquid Foundation. It's by foundation names, just get longer and longer. So this is the newest foundation launch from Rose Ink. I did get sent three shades in PR, um, along with one of their foundation brushes. So thank you very much to Rose Ink for sending these over. I do enjoy a foundation skin tint review. I've done a lot of skin tint reviews on my channel, the Rose Ink Skin Tint uh, being one of those. Uh, but I don't typically review medium to full coverage foundations or more classic foundation formulas because I'm more of a skin tint kind of girl myself. That's being a new foundation to the market, I thought that I would do a dedicated review. So just some kind of details on the product before we get started. Retails for £42. So I believe there's 31 shades and I have three of them here. I will say that I find Rose Ink base products run very light. I had the same issue with the skin tint and the two shades that I have look just ghostly on me. I can just about make the darker one work for me in the winter. And I did encounter the same issue today, <laughs> spoiler. Um, but luckily I have a few shades to kind of play around with, but that is something to bear in mind. If you can go into a store somewhere and swatch it to find your right shade, I definitely recommend doing that. And you know, it's 42 pound at the end of the day, so you don't want to be dropping that on a foundation that isn't going to work for you and that's the wrong shade. So the key claims, it visibly smooths the complexion, evens out tone and blurs with a soft matte finish, buildable, medium, weightless coverage, and it's non-comedogenic as well, so it won't um, include any pore clogging ingredients, which is really nice to know, especially if you do suffer with acne. I know that's something that a lot of people look out for. So before we get into the application, I don't think I mentioned this after I actually applied the foundation in my outro. So I'm gonna mention it here. I did apply it with their number three foundation brush, which looks like this. And typically for medium to full coverage foundations, I like to use a beauty blender or like a Real Technique sponge, just because I find that it lays the product down in a bit more of a flattering way. And I like that sometimes the sponge can kind of absorb any excess product, so you're not applying too much. And I do think that in the future, I will probably stick to that method of applying it with a sponge because I just think for me and my kind of dry combination skin, that's just how I like to apply slightly heavier foundations. But if you do want a bit more of a full coverage finish and you maybe have normal to oily skin and you're okay with kind of really pressing the product in and getting more of that full coverage look, then I do think a brush is a really nice option. But for me, just like something that's a bit more sheer, that looks a little bit more soft and hydrating on the skin. So I do always like to opt for a sponge. I think that's all the points that I want to cover. So let's get into the application. So I have these lovely clips as well that the brand kindly sent. So we're gonna, oh dear, I think I just broke it. So these are the three shades that they sent over. I have 3N Fair Neutral. I feel like this is going to be the one we're gonna go in with today. Um, 4W Light Warm, which um, yeah, definitely just from looking at it through the packaging looks a lot warmer. And then 6W uh, light warm as well. So I don't know um, if these two are going to be the right match. I feel like 6W is definitely going to be a little bit too, um, a little bit too dark for me. But the packaging feels really nice and luxurious. It's a really nice frosted glass. You have the kind of oval lid, which is um, definitely the shape that I think like to go for. Um, and then it has a nice pump as well. You get one fluid ounce of product, 30 mil, that's pretty standard for, for foundations. So it's 42 pound, which I feel like for a kind of high-end luxury brand, I feel like around 40, 50 pound is pretty standard across the industry. So I'm not too surprised about that. They did also include one of their um, foundation brushes. So this is the number three. So I have one of these as well just love a fresh <laughs> foundation brush. Very nice angled brush. I've used this before 
Where's my old disgusting one? Um, so this is clearly my used one. And then this is the nice fresh one. Uh, the shape I find anyway to be really nice and really soft actually. This one feels a bit softer, but they are definitely the same. Yeah, number three. Um, but yeah, really nice, soft, like the, I like the angle. It makes it really nice to blend in foundation. Okay, so I'm gonna read the little PR kind of pamphlet here. So it offers buildable coverage, has a weightless feel and a soft matte finish with a beautiful blurring effect. So I feel like it is going to be almost quite similar to the NARS soft matte. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from the description at the moment. So it's enhanced with bioengineered skincare that responds to the complexion's unique needs, making it suitable for all skin types. Um, so it does say it's suitable for all skin types. Um, I'd have to kind of look into the science of that. Um, that does sound quite interesting. But I'm going to go in with just a sheer amount first. And I am going to try 3N Fair Neutral. I think that's going to be the best shade match for me as we pump it out onto the back of my hand so let's see mm. okay yeah so it's a bit runny <laughs> so i'm just gonna take a little bit on my brush let's start to kind of work this in i think the shade is gonna be okay for me actually it looks a bit warm on the back of my hand but as i'm buffing it into my skin it's definitely but definitely more neutral. It's worth noting that I just have SPF on. I don't have a primer or anything like that because I do like to see how the foundation just kind of sits on top of skincare without having to go in with a primer. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit of 4W and then we'll get to see how this layers as well. It doesn't have much of a fragrance, so that's good. So that's one layer of the foundation. I obviously mixed a tiny bit of the darker shade through just because it was looking a bit ghostly. The coverage is really nice actually. It's definitely not as dewy as I normally go for. I feel like as it starts to dry down, it's going to, I don't know, become <laughs> a bit dry maybe, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, I have to remain optimistic, but it's not kind of sinking into my, fine line so that's always a good sign yeah I think it's just a little bit more coverage than I'm used to um at the moment I've been really loving skin tints and lighter coverage foundations so I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup let it sink into the skin a little bit more and then once I've done I will come back and we'll see how it's looking um I will link everything that I'm using on my face down below I will just be through this part I haven't used any powder and it's definitely kind of sinking into my smile lines not too bad on my on my forehead lines but definitely my smile lines so now that it has settled down a little bit it I haven't used any powder and um, because I feel like the finish is definitely skin like it is a bit more soft matte um, than what I'm used to in a foundation I will say that so for me, I probably wouldn't powder this down because on my dry skin, I don't know. I feel like it would just take it into cakey town. <laughs> um, it settled a little bit in my smile lines. I feel like this will be quite a good long lasting foundation because it is more of that matte finish. Hello. Hello. What do you think? I do like it. I think because I'm just so used to not wearing heavy coverage foundations at the moment, really anything past uh, like a light 
to medium coverage. Um, this is a bit of a shock to the system, but I do really like it. It reminds me of the Lancome Tonte Doll Foundation, which again, is a really good event foundation. Really good if you want something that's slightly more on the matte side that really sets down and lasts really nicely. This is reminding me of that quite heavily. So I will be excited to test this and I will leave in the description box the wear time. Um, it doesn't say on my little pamphlet here. So I can't see anything on the wear time uh, that's immediately kind of jumping out at me from the website and the description that it's giving. So I will leave in the description box how I found that it wore. Um, I'm not really doing anything too crazy today. I've already been out and done my errands and stuff like that. So I am just gonna be home for the rest of the afternoon. It's um, about one o'clock now. So probably have this on until like 10 o'clock tonight. So hopefully that'll be a good amount of time to test it. Again, I feel like this is going to be quite similar to the Lancome, which I do really like. So I'm hoping that it will last really nicely. Obviously, if you do want to ensure that your foundation is locked in place, definitely use a setting powder, use a setting spray. For the purposes of this video and testing the product out, I'm not going to do that. Um, but on a typical day, to be honest, I would probably use a bit of setting spray. Again, just to reiterate, I do have dry skin, so that's why I'm not going to go in with a powder. And I think if I were to powder with this particular foundation, I would probably just set underneath my eyes. I don't think I would go too crazy around the rest of the face, but if you have oily skin, um, I do think this would be quite a nice foundation because again, it does have more of that self-setting matte finish. So it's not going to be too um, too oily for you. And then you can kind of add in the glow with a highlight or if you want to use more of an illuminating primer, that would be a really good way to manipulate this a little bit and kind of alter the finish. But again, I just used my SPF. I haven't gone in with anything too crazy in terms of a primer because I do like to see how the foundation sits and wears on its own just with normal skincare. I do really like Raising as a brand. I really like their aesthetic and it's nice to see them coming out with different products to cater for different skin types as well. We see a lot of skin tints. We see a lot of very lightweight, kind of thin natural formulas from a lot of these more minimal brands. So it's really nice to see a brand like Grey's Inc that is definitely more on the minimal side of things, coming out with more of a medium to full coverage foundation because it just caters for a few more people. It's a little bit more versatile. So I really hope that you enjoyed this quick review. Again, I will have um, some more information in the description box as well as a link to where you can buy the product. Um, thank you again to Rose Inc for sending over these shades. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.